We're glad everybody can make it out. I've got quite a few announcements this morning. Uh, first, we have a card here thanking everyone that uh, helped with the uh, dinner for uh, Kathy's memorial service. Uh, whatever you did to help was very much appreciated. Um, and we have a thank you in the bulletin here uh, from the family of Kathy Simmons, uh, thanking you all uh, during this difficult time for your support, the wonderful meal, and the love that you have showed to our family. Uh, we have uh, quite a few on our sick list. Um, please keep Rhonda's dad in your prayers. He's in the hospital with problems moving his left arm. Uh, he had an MRI on Thursday. Is there any update on that, Rhonda? No, haven't got the results of that. Yeah, I'm still in the hospital. Donnie Hendershot is very weak and not feeling well, so please continue to keep him in prayer. Connie Lynch is now recovering at home. Um, please pray for Pam Phillips' nephew, Clinton, as he is dealing with some medical concerns. Uh, Evan Duckworth, keep her in your prayers as she recovers. Uh, Tony, this is Elvis and Ann's neighbor's brother-in-law, is worse uh, from his stroke that he suffered. He's now in critical condition. Uh, Tammy Harris's sister Anita had a heart attack. She does not have any blockages, but they are still keeping her in the hospital at this time for observation. Uh, Elvis has a hernia and will be having surgery to repair it in the future. You know, uh, uh, years ago, doctors told me I had several hernias, but they were concerned at that time because the fat were plugging it up and keeping it from getting worse. And with all the weight the Elvis has lost, he ain't, he ain't got that luxury. <laughs> Elvis and Ann will be traveling to Canada on Thursday for vacation. Can I go with you? Please pray for a safe trip. Uh, so um, West Virginia Christian Youth Camp is, um, is still going on. Uh, this week starts Intermediate Week, uh, ages 11 through 14. Uh, next week, July 14th through the 19th, is Junior Week, ages 7 through 11. And then All Age Week is July 21st through the 26th, ages 8 to 18. Uh, Singing Emphasis Week will be July uh, 28th through uh, August the 2nd, ages 12 through 8. Um, you can register at www.wvcyc.com. The cost is $175, but scholarships are available. Uh, we have, uh, in the way of birthdays and anniversaries, uh, Ruth Lemon's birthday is uh, July the 12th. And uh, Jarrett and Jordan Flynn's anniversary was June the 27th. Um, we have a thank you here from those who helped out financially with Bible Camp. Your love and support are very important. And please don't forget the ladies' tea party. This will be Saturday, August the 10th in the, uh, in the fellowship room. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, upcoming events. Monday, July the 8th, Elders and Preachers meeting at 4.30. Tuesday, July 9th, Ladies Night Out at Western Sizzling at 5.30. Sunday, June 14th, uh, oh, I will be speaking that morning. Uh, and then uh, the evening speaker will be Mark Vaughn. Sunday, July 28th, Traveling Youth Group uh, at the Latrobe Street Church of Christ, 6 p.m. And Sunday, August the 4th, uh, will be our Sunday evening song service. Are there any announcements that I overlooked? Allison sent me a message. Gabriel was showing signs of a heat stroke yesterday, and he's still not feeling well. Okay. And so she's staying home, keeping an eye on him. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, Gabe uh, was uh, showing signs of heat stroke yesterday, and he's still not feeling well. So Allie uh, uh, and he are staying home and resting uh, this morning. Okay, 
So um, uh, Donna Hendershot's cancer is growing and uh, they're gonna be doing some more tests on him to see uh, if there's anything uh, they can have to do to help him. But uh, we all know that prayer is the most effective medicine there is. Anything else? Now it's time to begin our worship and Mike will be leading us in song. Thank you. Number 406, the worship of the king. The worship of the king. Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, shall have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven then he warned okay. let's go to God in prayer our father in heaven we're thankful for this day that you've given us beauty that surrounds us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather here together to worship your high and holy name. Thank you, Father, for the church and the fellowship that we enjoy. Father, we pray that you will bless the congregation here at Sunrise, bless our efforts as we work to spread your gospel to those that are around us. Father, we pray that uh, 
you will be with those of our number that are sick and unable to be here. We pray, Father, that you will watch over them and over those that are caring for them. We pray that they might soon regain their health and be able to be with us again. Father, we ask that as we go through this service this morning, that the things said and done here are pleasing in your sight. Pray, Father, that you will continue to go with us as we walk through our lives. Help us, Father, always to be shining your light to those around us. Help us, Father, to recognize the temptations of Satan places before us as we flee from. Father, we pray that you will forgive us for we've sinned against you in the past. Pray, Father, that when our lives here are over, might have that happy and eternal home with you in heaven. And it's through Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Number 449. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Man of sorrow, what a name for the Son of God who came through when sinners to gave us to remember the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. The Bible clearly says that the wages or the reward for sin is death. And that very plainly means that each and one of, every one of us should be dead right now. Christ did that for us. 
He stood in our place. He suffered that death so that we would not have. He set forth this memorial that we might never forget the price that he paid for us. Let's consider this as we partake of these images. Father, we're so grateful for your Son, Jesus, for the sacrifice that was made on Calvary's cross. We thank you, Father, for this bread that represents his body that hung on Calvary's cross. We pray, Father, that as we partake of it, it be pleasing in thy sight. It's through Jesus' name that we pray. In your thanks for the fruit of the vine. Father, we thank you also for this fruit of the vine that represents Christ's blood which was shed on Calvary's cross. The blood that washes away our sins and gives us the hope of eternal life with you in heaven. We pray, Father, that as we partake of it, it be pleasing in your sight. It's through Jesus' name that we pray.
This concludes the Lord's Supper. God makes no way in his word, no, no provision for the church other than the cheerful giving of its members. And we have that opportunity at this time. Number 435, America the Beautiful.
number 593. Mm -hmm. To the word, to, to the word, we are servants of God. Let us follow the path that our master has drawn. With the bold of his counsel, our strength to renew. Let us do with our heart our hands tied to do. Please keep uh, Connie in her prayers as uh, she recovers from that. I am also grateful for uh, everyone who had helped with camp. Uh, many people here at Sunrise gave financially to that effort, um, and we certainly do appreciate that. We had a wonderful week. Um, not as many kids as we normally have. It was over the holiday, of course, and a large group of our kids went up to the next level. Um, intermediate week and so we're kind of in a rebuilding year or two it looks like um, so we're probably smaller but um, we had just a wonderful time wonderful kids cream of the crop um, not a single discipline problem all week uh, they memorize so many verses and it's interesting because when you're dealing with seven to eleven year olds uh, some of the seven year olds really can't hardly even read yet and yet they're memorizing verses. Um, 
we had three people memorize 43 verses each. Um, and, and so we're just so pleased with that. And uh, um, one little boy, he worked until the very, very, very last minute. Um, I told him, I said, well, normally the cars need to be back to the Dover myself by uh, evening worship on the last day. And I said, well, I just have to have them before you go to bed. And I, I tore up all the scores late Thursday night, or really Friday morning. Um, and uh, so one boy worked and worked and worked to I think 12.30 um, Thursday night. And he learned how to do them with sign language so that would remind him of the words that were in there. So I just thought that was just remarkable. Um, and he did get off and made it before bed to all 43 verses. And so that was a, a wonderful event there. Um, by the way, even uh, little Kinsley, who comes here with Mike, she memorized three verses and she can hardly even read. So I think the rest of us have no excuse. So it's a wonderful thing. Appreciate your support. Um, we're going to look at Peter today, and Ann and I will be gone next week, and then the week after we'll look at Peter again. But when I think of the Apostle Peter and his life, and looking at the New Testament, he is a person that comes to mind um, quite often. And if there's anybody else, it's probably the Apostle Paul that comes to mind. But Peter is, is mentioned. Of course, we know Peter, many things that he does and, and did in, in, or did in the Bible. And um, he preached a uh, sermon on the um, day of Pentecost that, that everybody had heard and was believed and was baptized and, and, and just spent a lot of time with Jesus and, and different things like that. But when I think of Peter, he's very much like myself, if you will. And I have, have to ask the question, when Peter looks in the mirror, what does he see? Or when you or I look in the mirror, what do we see? And, and as I look in the mirror, many times I see someone that's very unworthy. Maybe even unworthy of love. But I see someone who makes a lot of mistakes. I, I see someone that, that if, you know, will say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And these are all, many other things, and these are all characteristics that certainly that we could put up on the Apostle Peter. Now, now we probably wouldn't take these and put them on too many more people, but, but the Apostle Peter is, is a person that, that would say something before he would think about it. When it just pops in his mind like a light bulb, he would say it, and then a minute later he might say, oh, I probably should have said that. Or I, maybe I should have said it in a different way. But unlike Peter himself and each of us, Peter wrote that Jesus never at one time sinned. And that's what you and I might say when we look at, at, at ourselves in the mirror, we might say we're sinners. Certainly the Bible would. And, and but Jesus never one time sinned. First or first Peter chapter two verse twenty one. Peter says, "For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow His steps." Have you ever tried to do that in the snow? And there might be somebody's footprints in the snow, and, and you don't want to make another set of prints, and so you kind of trace over their prints and get as close as you can. Now, your shoe probably should be a little smaller than their shoes. You may not do it right, but, but and usually we get maybe a step or two, and then we mess up and make another step. But it's hard sometimes to follow after someone's footsteps, but that's the idea that we really get that Peter is given with Jesus. Well, we're not necessarily to follow Peter, although um, if we look at his life in the entirety, it's a good example, but we're really to follow Jesus is saying, or Peter is saying, follow Jesus, not me. And so all of us can empathize with Peter as we can see so much of us in him. And so I want to look at three things this morning about Peter. First that I want to look at is the selection. And it's interesting when we think about the selection of Peter, the John chapter one and verses 35 through 42 is a 
rather lengthy scripture in John. John chapter 1 says this, the next day, John, this is John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer, with two of his disciples. He looked at Jesus as he walked by. Imagine that. So, so unnamed disciples at this point are standing there with John the Baptizer. And here comes Jesus walking by them. And John just focuses in on Jesus. And he says, Behold the Lamb of God. And what happens next is interesting. The two disciples heard him say, and they begin to follow Jesus. Jesus turns around, sees them following him, and he says, What do you seek? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Isn't that an interesting question? Jesus is walking by, and, 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 and John the Baptist sees him. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. In other passages, he would say, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But he doesn't say that here. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. And they see him. They begin to follow him. Jesus turns around. Why? What are you seeking? And they say, Where are you staying? It's kind of an odd question, isn't it? But we'll, we'll find out why this odd question. Maybe. They got caught off guard or, or, or something else. And he said to them, come, you'll see. So they came and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. And one of these two heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him so Andrew is one of those who are in this group of two disciples that are following Jesus they follow him to see where he's at where he's staying and they stayed with him that day Andrew runs off to get his brother bring his brother back his brother is Peter and, and so he brings Peter to Jesus he's when he found him he says we found the Messiah which means Christ he brought, brings them back to Jesus. Jesus looked at Peter and said, You are Simon, the son of John, or son of Jonah, your Bible might say. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. So this is the beginning of a relationship between Jesus and Peter. This is the selection. Now, I find it interesting that, that, that his brother went and got him and said, we found the Messiah, which means Christ. Come on, let's, let's, let's go see him. It took his brother to invite him in. Is that evangelism? Yeah, that's evangelism. Now, now Peter had been a disciple of, of John the Baptist and, and was introduced by Andrew and his brother to Christ and Jesus could see something, some promise in Peter. Maybe Jesus just knew or something, but he saw some promise, some connection there in Peter. And perhaps maybe more than you or I would see in Peter, but, but Jesus certainly saw that. And, and Peter did not know what was going to happen at this time. Peter is a fisherman. But it's encouraging to know that Jesus can make of us if we will continue to be with him. He, he, can, he can make us do or have us do things that we probably would never think of. And Peter would have the, the, the distinct privilege of traveling alongside. Can you imagine traveling alongside Jesus? And I wasn't staying at the hill. I'm talking about a baby that was born where there's no place for him in the end. Chances are pretty close to 100% that Jesus lived a very poor life. Because in many circles, he was not accepted. But as one of his apostles beholding his miracles, can you imagine that? Can you imagine sitting there, standing there, and watch Jesus perform a miracle? Can you imagine hearing Jesus preach? Have, have the words of promise come out of the mouth of Jesus. How wonderful that would be just to spend some time with Jesus. And Peter, over the years, would be exceedingly close to the Son of God. 
Imagine you spending as much as three years alongside the Messiah, watching his moves, hearing his powerful message. It is no wonder that, that Peter preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost after that time. Peter and the others would heal the sick. They would cleanse lepers. They would raise the dead and cast out demons. And Jesus and Peter. Matthew 10 and verse 6 through 8 says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Proclaim as you go. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven was the church. The church is getting started. It's at hand. It's going to be happening. Are you ready for the church? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. Receive without pain. Give without pain. It was Peter that said in Matthew chapter 16, Verses 18, I tell you, you are Peter upon this rock, I will build my church. Roy well, explained that passage a little bit this morning. And it's not much different than today. People are coming to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and Jesus is thinking, man, you know, people are saying all kinds of stuff about me. And they were. Some people just couldn't figure out it was Jesus. And, and, and so he begins to be a little concerned. And, and so he looks at the apostles and says, what are they saying? Well, some are saying this and some are saying that. Some are saying you're a prophet. Some are saying you know, you, 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 you're, you're Jeremiah. Some are saying you're Elijah. Peter, who do you say that I am? And that question rings true to us today. Who do we say this man was or is? Do we say it's Jesus? That's our, our basis of our belief. The same question that Peter had to deal with very early on. Peter says, I believe that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, just seeing me face to face, that has not given you any insight into this. This did not reveal this to you, but who revealed this to you is, is the works that come from God. And upon this rock, Petros, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Whatever you bound in heaven, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whether it loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And these keys we know that he uses them twice. All of this shows the great privilege that Peter possessed in traveling with Christ. Wouldn't you want to, if you lived in this century, wouldn't you want to be selected to be an apostle? Was being an apostle a lot of work? Absolutely, it was a ton of work. Was being an apostle worth it? I, I think so. There's only one unhappy apostle. There's 12 or 13, if you, if you count the, the, the replacement, only one unhappy, and that was Judas Iscariot. And why was he unhappy? Because he sinned. He let greed take a hold of him and thought money was more important than anything else and said, I don't know why we're putting expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. And I could just steal the money and put it in my bank account. The selection of Peter. But secondly, you know, Peter was a good guy. We built him up to be that. Peter made, like I mentioned earlier, some mistakes. We all do, don't we? If I say, I'm not going to say this, but if I say, raise your hand if you've never made a mistake, then we find out who the liars are, and that's probably a mistake. Everybody has made mistakes. We're human. Paul would say in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know that. By the way, that was a memory verse last week. And what else? Kelly, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We've earned death. 
Peter earned death. Why? Because of his mistakes, because of his sins against God. But God gives him eternal life. Now here's the faith question we see here. Matthew chapter 14 verse 25 sets up the scene for us. It's the fourth watch of the night. So they take the night hours and they divide it up into shifts, if you will. Uh, you know, Tyler gets first watch, I get second watch, you know, Lonnie gets third watch, and, and on and on and on. We come to the fourth watch and we're getting closer to probably morning hours. It's the fourth watch of the night. And someone comes walking on the water. And I want you to notice the water in this picture. This is the Sea of Galilee. And, and from what I'm told, um, it can get in this condition in a matter of seconds. It can be smooth as silk and then become wavy as, as can be in just a matter of seconds. It's got kind of a mind of its own, if you will. The, the boys were over there one time, but we can't go in today. Why? Well, it's crazy. The next day, it's smooth as you know. And here comes Jesus walking on the sea at night. Imagine being charged with the fourth watch. Oh, oh man, I'm tired. What's that? Not a boat. Not pirates. Some guy walking on the water. It's Jesus. Disciples saw him walking on the sea. They, they were terrified. Well, what do you mean? You see somebody walking on the water. It's something you don't see every day. And, and he says, a ghost. They cried out in fear. They, they didn't recognize it at this point being Jesus. But immediately Jesus spoke to them. When they heard his voice, like another passage would tell us, ah, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. He had such a relationship with his followers that Jesus said, it's, it's just me. It's just me. They knew his voice. Oh, it's Jesus. Oh, you're scared of us, Jesus. What are you doing? It's crazy. You're know, walking on the water. Peter answered, Lord. Peter's vision must not have been as good. If it's you, command to come, me to come to you on the water. That almost sounds like Peter's testing Jesus. Jesus, come. Now, this is nothing that I, I don't like necessarily water. I have no desire to walk on water. So this is probably something that I'm not going to say to Jesus. I would wait for him to come to me at this point. But Peter says, well, if, if it is you, tell me to walk on the water. Command that I do that. Jesus says, okay, that's what you want. Come. Oh, we know this story, don't we? Peter gets up out of the boat begins to walk on water. The water. But when he saw the wind, he became what? Here's the word. I, I want you to notice this word. Afraid. What has fear caused in your life? There's a cost, there's a price for fear. It's a big price. It's probably more expensive than anything you've ever bought in your life. We all have it, every one of us. It started, I'll trace fear back. It started with Adam and Eve, didn't it? It's a result of sin. When God came to visit them after the first sin, they hid themselves because the Bible would say they were afraid. And ever since then, Every one of us has had fear. Fear of something. All our fears are not the same. Some people might have a fear of heights. Other people like to climb like uh, astronauts. I don't know. Monkeys, I guess. I don't know. Whatever you like to climb like. We all have different fears. But fears, well, well this, 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 I call fear like a clamp. A, a fear will clamp onto you and grip you and tighten and tighten and squeeze and tighten till you can't breathe. And from that, you make irrational decisions. 
This is what clamped on to Peter. Because you have the Savior of the world giving you power to do a miracle, to walk on water. No one's can even imagine what that would be like. Would I like to imagine that? As someone that's afraid of water? Absolutely, I'd like to imagine it. But to, to imagine it and to understand that it's not anything that I can do. And we've all probably tried that. We've been in the pool. Well, that didn't work, you know. It's nothing that we can do. It's faith that God can do it through us. And it takes that kind of faith to understand that you and I can go to heaven, doesn't it? If we have faith in God, that God can save us through his son. You say, well, I have to be obedient to his will and confess and be baptized and be faithful. And all. Yeah, so those are our directions to go to heaven. But it comes down to my faith in God. My faith that, that, that I won't steer to the right or, or, or to the left. But when the wind blew, and it's interesting, that same word here used for wind in the original language is used in John chapter 3. Remember the, the first part of John chapter 3. It's used about four or five verses down from that. First part of is when Jesus, or Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night. Remember that story? Jesus gets right down to him. It's almost like Nicodemus is knocking on Jesus' door and and, and Jesus doesn't do any pleasantry. You know, how are you this evening? Come in and get a cup of coffee. None of that stuff. And, and Jesus says, you, you, you know, starts talking about salvation right away. And then he would say, well, unless one is born of water and the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. How can I be born when one is old? And he entered the second time into his mother's womb and be born. Most surely I say to you, you must be born of water and spirit. Hold on. I forgot a Greek concordance. Look up that word spirit. We'll go down a few <coughs> verses more. Look up that word wind. They're the same Greek word. See, we're tied to that. It's all about the faith. It's all about the Holy Spirit. It's all about the power that God would give in, 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 in the circumstances. And so when he was afraid, he began to sink. Fear can cause us to sink. Fear can cause us to cry out. He cries out. But the next thing we read is that Jesus reached out to him. What did Jesus do? Jesus saved him. That's what Jesus can do for us. Jesus can reach out to us and save us. Well, we're in a lost and dying world, and, and are we fearful of this world and, and, and where it may go? Probably. And, and Jesus can reach out and, and save us. Whatever situation we find ourselves in in life, and, and, and if we find ourselves in a, in a pile of sin even, Jesus can reach out and save us. If we find ourselves in a bad relationship or, or, or something else, Jesus can reach out and save us. Jesus is that lifeline. When, when I get on a ship sometimes, I, I look at that, you know, maritime law requires that, that the ship of, of any size go over the rules before you set sail. So you have to go to your muster station and, and, and wherever your cabin is at, uh, each di district has a different muster station and, and it's made like that so there's not too many people there. You might have a, a hundred or two hundred people at your muster station and you go there and you go over the rules. Okay, this is the life jacket. This is how you put on a life jacket. This little ring here, there's five of those on a boat. Good luck, we're gonna throw five out and I hope you get one. But we have these boats on the side, on the side. We're gonna launch those off the side. Since the Titanic, it's been the law to always have enough life vests and always have enough boats to put everybody on the ship because we don't want anybody to die or drown. And that's maritime law. 
You know God's lines? I'm ready to scoop you up out of the water and save your soul. I'm ready to scoop you up out of sin. I'm ready to, to scoop you out of stress and, and fear and, 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 and all the things that come through life for us and, and, and save your soul. Certainly it happened to Peter. They got into the boat. Jesus reached out his hand, grabbed Peter, they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And if you're there, you say, wow. The power of God. Robertson comments. <clears throat> it's one thing to see a storm from the ship, the deck of the ship, isn't it? It's another thing to see a storm standing in it in the water. A whole different view of a storm, isn't it? I was here when the storm came through the other night at the building. I had just got done with a funeral consultation and and I hadn't had time to leave yet. The storm started coming through, and I was downstairs in the office. Well, I could see the cameras from the monitor in the office. And the camera on this front block just the storm was so bad. It was just the camera was working, but you couldn't see anything. It was just total blackness. The storm, the winds were so now kind of acting like a tunnel on the map. And it wasn't quite as bad because it's the height of the building and, 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 and the way it pulls down. But I didn't want to go out that storm. Sometimes we walk, we won't go out in the rain, but we'll walk in the storms of life. Isn't that interesting? How would many in the church today respond if Jesus said to them, Oh, ye of little faith? That, that's what he said to Peter. He, he, you've been with me a long time. Your faith should be up here, but, but at this particular moment in time, it's not. Matthew 25 and verse 32 says that, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And, and those in the boat began to worship him and, and said, truly, you are the Son of God. Well, thirdly and lastly, this morning, Jesus knew Peter and he knows us. Most of us would probably like to say, well, nobody knows everything about me. That's not true, is it? We live in a world. I lost my story. We live in a world way shifted, so I'll, I'll get there. Well, I guess you'll find it. It's on point three. Most of us, most of us would think that, that we have some secrets, but we live in a world now, it's different than a world from 50 years ago, ain't it? There's microphone drops everywhere you walk, if you will. People are spying on us. Cameras everywhere you go. You know, some companies, like Walmart, for example, have you been to Walmart? You know how many thousands of cameras they have? Not hundreds, thousands. Every aisle of every Walmart has at least five cameras. And so they're, they're watching, uncle, uncle, whatever is watching us wherever we go. If, if I, they have they used to put a weight in the, uh, the thing in the road for uh, if your car gets close to the light, it will trigger the light. Now there's cameras up there. There's actually some down here by 77. Those cameras aren't to check your speed or see if you're running light. They will count the cars and set off an automated system. If there's two cars or more, it will tell the light, okay, now we need to change. So they're watching us. Now in other places, they have cameras that watch you go through stop signs and red lights and speed and, and, and all those things. But God knows, doesn't he? God knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. 
Jesus, being the Son of God, knew the fatalities of his disciples. He, he, he foreknew that his disciples would be offended at him. And, and Peter, being overconfident, stated that, that he would never be offended at Jesus. Matthew 26 and verse 31 through 35 says that Jesus said, you will fall away because of me this night. I'd be kind of nervous if Jesus said that, but, but we know the story. It's, it's when the rooster crowed, isn't it? And, and though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away, Peter said. P Peter said, you know, it's kind of walking in, in a church building of, of three or 4,000 people. Said, and Peter looked and said, well, everybody else here might fall away, but, but I'm not going to. I'm going to follow you. Well, that's not the situation. Is it? You know, the rooster crowed, and in verse 35, even if I must die with you, Peter would say, you know the rooster crowed when he did. He said, I don't know the man. And we have to ask the question, did Peter mean what he said? Indeed he did. He, he meant to say that he would never fall away from Jesus. When they went to arrest him, we remember that he cut off the ear of Matthias. And Jesus said in John 18, verse 11, Peter, put away your sword, for I shall not drink of the cup of the Father that has given me. The last day as it opposed this morning, I want to look at Luke chapter 22. Jesus had told Peter before the rooster crows. In chapter 22, beginning at verse 54, then they seized him, Jesus that is, and led Jesus away. They are bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following a distance. Can you imagine this scene? Peter is now in the the area where Jesus had been praying. Remember, Jesus brings Peter there and, and, and two other apostles and, and says, okay, stay awake while I go and pray. Um, comes back and not awake. Goes, Please, Peter, stay awake. Goes and prays, come back now, you know, does this three times. If it probably be your will, let this cup pass from me. Now, now here comes Judas leading Jesus or leading the, uh, the Roman government, if you will, and sees him. Peter pulls off his soul and cuts the ear off of Matthias, and, and Peter says, Oh, put down your sword. So they begin leading, and Judas, of course, lays the train kiss before that. And so they begin leading Jesus off to be tried. And, and basically a circus trial in the evening. Who was court at night? Nobody. Not even back then. And, and, and verse 55, and when they had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard. And sat down together, Peter sat down among them. A servant girl seeing him. So Peter's kind of, okay, I'm going to remain incognito, but I'm honest, I don't want to lose Jesus because if there's a chance to make a break for it, we're going to make a break for it. And so he follows Jesus in there and kind of stands in back in the quiet so that nobody would see him. Notice so a servant girl sees him as she sat in the light and looked closely at him and said, This, this man was with him. He denied and said, I, woman, I, I don't know. A, a little later, someone else saw him and said, you're the one. But Peter said, man, I, I'm not. And after an interval of about an hour still insisting, saying, certainly this man will also was with him, for he's a Galilean too. Peter says, man, I don't know what you are talking about. Another person would say, another book would say, I should say, another book would say, um, your speech betrays you. In other words, you're not here all looking like you're of the world. You, you, you know, you're not here cussing like a sailor. There's something different about you. You're, you're a person of God. We can tell your speech betrays you. Immediately while he's still speaking, the rooster crowed. Lord, turn. Can you imagine that? Here's some pressure for you. He's in the backdrop of Jesus. And he's going, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. No, 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 man. What's the name of me? I don't know, man. The rooster, Jesus turns and looks at him right in the face. Verse 61. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. Now he had said to him before the rooster crows today, he will deny me three times. When I look in a mirror, when I look at myself, what do I see? 
If you look at yourself, what do you see? I hope you see someone that has strong faith. Maybe not weak faith. Maybe if Jesus was walking on the water and told you to come towards him, that, that you'd be able to complete the task. You wouldn't have fear that, that would make you fall down every 10 seconds and, and, and have to try to get back up. And, and But we know when we fall down in life, Jesus is there to pull us back. Oh, we learned so much from Peter, but not from Peter. We learned about Jesus. This morning, if you need to come back to Jesus or if you need to come to Jesus, just like with Peter, Jesus has his arms stretched out for you. Would you come as we stand and as we sing?
Once again, we'd like to thank Elvis for another lesson, good lesson from God's Word. Um, is there anything else that needs to be announced this morning? Okay, I hope to see everyone back this evening for evening worship service. If you'll bow with me, we'll have a short prayer and we'll be dismissed. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day that you've given us. We're thankful, Father, for the opportunity that we've had to gather together to worship your high and holy name. We pray, Father, that as, that as we leave here, that you will be with each of us, that you'll give us safe passage to our destination. We pray, Father, that you'll bring us all back together at the next appointed time. It's through Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.